Hi guys, so you know I just got these um, Crafts Companion decoupage set in from HSN and I want to try it out because I have an idea of making a six inch square stepper card and I think this will work in that really well so um, if I have any you know basic items I'll be using they'll be linked in the description box those are affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items to those links and the reason I say basic is because this might not be available yet on HSN and I haven't even checked and I don't know if it's an HSN exclusive I mean it might be something that Crafts Companion will bring to their own site or maybe have on like Craft Stash or wherever else they're sold like scrapbook.com stuff like that but I am going to just take the paper, and I haven't <laughs> stamped and colored these in a long time. I think maybe the first time I ever reviewed one of their decoupage sets like this type, I stamped it and I showed you that. It's not my forte, it's not my strong suit, but maybe one day we'll try it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, for today we're just going to be using the dies. So we will get to that because that's going to be the easiest part, just popping these on here and running them through. Um, and then having our layers. Now again, I never really layer them up to six layers or whatever it is. One, yeah, six. I wasn't gonna count them, but I said six right there. I usually do like two or three layers. Maybe three layers. And then I'll use the other ones in a fun way sometimes too. So we'll see what we end up doing today. Um, but for sure, I'm gonna go grab a 12 inch piece of cardstock, like a 12 by 12. Hopefully it's card, like sturdy weight, because that's what we need. Um, we'll design that and then we'll move on to decorating it, okay? So I'll be right back. I just went and looked at my stash and I found this paper pack. I think I got it at Walmart probably a long time ago. <laughs> the colors are really bright in this, but... Oh, look at that! I was thinking about going more with the blue. I saw blue in here that... I don't know, the color is kind of weird. And then we're going to have the matte layer. It probably goes better with this one. All right, fine. And this one's already been cut into. This is not the thickest paper. I probably would go with something thicker if you have it, but I don't have a lot of heavyweight 12 by 12 papers, you know? Um, maybe deck hits with a view, but they have their own pattern. I was just looking for a basic color for the base of this thing. And we want it to be six inches by 12. So I'm gonna cut this six inches wide since it's already been cut before. Hopefully it was cut straight. Actually, I don't know if that's the case. So let me move it down just a little bit. We'll cut that off and then we'll do it on this side just in case. I don't know how I end up cutting that piece of paper while it was in there. Sometimes I'll <laughs> slide like this thing in my paper pack and cut it. Um, so that might have been what happened. But So we have a six inch piece here. Now, I had mentioned before that I think this came with a scoring tool and it did. But I just don't know where it is. <laughs> so right now I only have cutting tools for this. But they do also have a scoring tool that pops in here. So I've just been scoring it with my own tool um, and that's what I'll keep doing so first thing I like to do on these um, stepper cards and we're going to talk about what we're doing in just a minute is go ahead and cut the the other direction not cut sorry score oh my gosh you know what I used some gold spray earlier and it wasn't set and it's getting on my card base but that's okay uh, just let me make sure this thing is 12 inches oh what am I doing yeah okay is that we're gonna score it at six inches you can do that here or you can do it obviously in your scoreboard basically when I do a stepper card I do everything on a trimmer like this paper trimmer so I'm gonna go ahead and score the six inches because that is gonna be through our whole stepper the six inches okay I'm not gonna like fold it right now but there it is so this is gonna be a six inch square card how far in do you want do you want a even stepper with three inches and three inches of steps or do you want four inches and two inches of steps you know whatever it is that you want to do should we do three and three? That's right down the middle. Is that weird? Should we go four? Huh. Let's do four and two. <laughs> okay. So I want four inches in. And then the, the stepper area is going to be two inch blocks. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So this area is going to be like this. And then we have a two inch piece. Let me see what two inches looks like actually in, in real life. That's kind of skinny. Let's do... Let's do two and a half. So three and a half inches in. Sorry guys, it's just two is very skinny. So three and a half inches in. And I always do my steppers pretty much one inch up, one inch down at the beginning. And then you always have to add up to whatever the height of your card is. So six inches. So if we're going one inch up and one inch down, that's already two inches gone. And then we have four left. So let's go two up and two down. And then the one in the back will be 
three up and three down. Hey, that sounds good to me. So, I'm going to bring this over here. And... Oh my gosh, you guys, I simply do not have time for this. <laughs> you know, it's like, I gotta make videos. This one is obviously just a video I want to make with the things I have here in my stash that I got in. And, um, I took a break, because I don't know if you noticed in the scene, right before this, I went to, um, you know, go ahead and do the cut line. Um, we talked about going one up, down, one inch up, one inch down, then two inches up and two inches down, so that makes six inches, right, on this front part, and then the three inches up and three inches down on that back part. So I had paused because I was going to put it in here wrong. So I was like, oh, I have to cut it this way, so I need to put it in here. So I took a quick pause so I can edit it right. And I don't know what happened, but it was recording, and then all of a sudden my camera does this every once in a while. It's like, X, and seeking data. And it basically just deleted the whole, like, five minutes of whatever I was doing. Ugh. So as you can see, I finished <laughs> the card base. I'm going to do it again. But maybe that's good for you guys because it cut out a lot of whatever I was talking about. Who knows? I think what I was de deciding is how far in do you want to cut it? Do you want um, you know, your 6-inch card to have right down in the middle 3 inches on this side, 3 inches of stepper you know, on this other side, however you want to do it. So I had decided on... That's, I didn't want it even like that. But 4 inches on this side and 2 inches here leaves such a small space. you know. So I went 3 and a half. So what we're going to do is go ahead and bring it here so we have our 12 inches by 6 inches. It's already scored at the 6 inches. And what we're going to do is bring this over. And I'm going to line up this piece at 3.5. And, and you can put your stepper on either side. You know, I always end up putting it on the right side, but it's whatever you want. And then we had talked about, and I'm just moving it now so I don't end up cutting my paper. Um, how far up, you know, we want to start this off. So I guess it's nice to have an example now. <laughs> We had discussed before that whenever you design your cards, you want to make your steppers go up and down the same amount, up and down the same amount, up and down the same amount, but that amount has to add to the front of the card size. So whatever it is that you're doing, whatever size card, it needs to equal that. And then in the back, I just cut it in half, but, or, you know, score it at the halfway mark, but you can also score it scallop down again or just as high as this, whatever it makes sense, right? It doesn't have to be this way, but this is just how I do it. It makes it easy. So we're up one, up one, up, down one. Up two inches, down two inches, and then up three inches, and then the final three inches down. So, I'm going to start at one inches here. And I like to do this if you want to score it first, and then do your score lines, and then come back and cut it, whatever you want to do. But we're starting at one inches, because that's where we're going to do our first cut. And I'm going to keep going to basically three inches, which is three inches from here, or up to three inches, however it is. But I'm going to the three inches, and I love this, how it has the little pointer, so you can see exactly where you're going. Right there. Okay, and that is the only cut we're making. Everything else is scoring. So, um, you know, I guess I can keep this out here for now. So, I'm going to bring this over. And I like to start this way sometimes. Actually, I'm going to bring it down. It just depends on how much I have over here. Because right now I'm going to have to line this up at one inch. And, you know, you have grid all the way down, so you can have a pretty good idea that you're pretty straight there with that. And I'm going to pop this down. And I'm going to take my scoring tool, and from the cut line down, I'm going to score at one inch. Okay, there's my one inch score line. And since we did one inch, we've got to come down another inch, so I'm going to line it up at two inches. On here, put that down, right to the cut line, another score line. And now I want to go up two inches and back down two inches, so I'm going to go to four. So we've done one, two, four. And our line for six inches is already here from before when we scored at six inches. Now all I have to do is score it here, which is three inches from the edge or nine inches, right, if we're doing it this way. So I'm going to bring this over and line it up at nine inches or so and put my score line. I'm not going to use this for my card base for this <laughs> tutorial, but I have to show you how to do it right. So I just grabbed another color of card. All right, guys, so there it is. Hopefully it's nice and straight. It does look like it's going off a little bit, but I don't know if that's just my eyes or what. But now we're going to fold this. What is this called? Mountain fold? We am fold it up. And as you do that, this one's going to want to go back. This one needs to go up. This one needs to go back. This one needs to go up. So mountain and valley. And then another mountain fold here. Now, as I'm squeezing this, or squeezing this, <laughs> this is handmade. So it's quite possible I'm off on some, you know, whatever it is. So as I come in here, I'm going to straighten this out by looking at the edge. I'm going to make sure that's nice and straight. And when I come over here, it's going to be all wonky. It's possible that this is like too high or this one's too low or whatever, right? Once you get here, because if you're just a little crooked, 
just kind of give yourself the scoring that puts it that makes it nicest does that make sense so there is our card base again with the steps up and down and it's a six inch card basically square you put it in an envelope that holds a six inch square card okay I'm gonna pause just in case because I can see that it's not eating this what happens is sometimes it'll keep doing this weird thing to me my, my camera and it did this I think like a year ago so I'm gonna pause right now just to know that that piece of film is solid <laughs> I'll be right okay. back okay so that's in the books we don't have to <laughs> be afraid that it's gonna eat that whole chunk so we have these portions you know obviously it's six inches by three and a half right we said three and a half so what matte layers do you like so if it's six inches by three and a half you know I like my eighths and I know eights make it tougher but it's whatever you guys want so this is oopsie what happened there this was a pen I guess six by three and a half is what it actually is right so I'm gonna do five and seven eighths for my first mat by three and three eighths I know you can't see I'm just writing it down so I can repeat it but there it is that space is six by three and a half I'm gonna do five and seven eighths by three and three eighths and the next mat layer will be five and three quarters by three and a quarter okay and that's because that's what I like if you don't like that you can do five and three quarters by three and a quarter which is this number and then the next matte layer could be five and a half by three right these little chunks are gonna be uh, fun to work with because they're gonna be two and a half inches so this one's two and a half by one right this one's two and a half by two and this one's two and a half by three so my first matte layer for this two and a half by one is going to be very small and the next one's gonna be even smaller so sometimes I don't even make a matte layer for something this small but you know again I'll just go down by eighths so two and three eighths by seven eighths so two and three eighths by seven eighths two and three eighths by seven eighths and then the next one will be two and a quarter by three quarters and then here two and a half by two it's gonna be again two and three eighths they're all gonna be two and three eighths <laughs> by this one will be one and seven eighths and then by two and seven eighths and then an eighth inch from down for the second one right which would be two and a half two and a quarter by one and three quarters two and a quarter by two and three quarters so I'm gonna cut those matte layers just cut pieces of paper and I'll be right back the dancing but dragonfly dancing butterfly the words are right in front of me I think that's really pretty it just matches up so nicely and then I always forget whenever you have like an inch or a little three-eighths of an inch or something small like that to cut don't forget you have this side right and this side is usually partitioned in quarters so quarter half three quarters an inch so you can turn your paper and cut it this way instead of trying to line it up over here and being off and all that kind of stuff which I didn't remember till the second time I was like oh that's right my own <laughs> advice I forget it um, but here we go so I'm just gonna stick these down and I mean, these papers are gorgeous on both sides I chose the piece of this paper that would have the dragonfly up towards the top so that when I put my flowers which of course I'm probably gonna put in this bottom corner will still show up right so um, when I have this all set up we'll cut these gorgeous babies out here and it'll be like right here it's kind of weird to me that it has a lot of white space so we'll see how much of that ends up staying but that's okay so we'll do that or no hmm I'll say or I can just start off with these flowers and not even bother with this and put my own sprigs in 
we could do that. It's whatever you want. So on these pieces, again, I'm just going to layer them together. And then I'll layer them on. Like this, I'm pretty much just going to stick down. So I might as well just do that. So I'll do that for all of them, you guys. I know I've done a lot of steppers in the immediate past here. <laughs> past a uh, couple weeks. So you're just going to glue them together. And then glue them in the space. And I kind of did these so that they would just meet up where they cut before. You can do whatever you want. Obviously you can use different colors of paper even. So I'll put that there. Glue those together. Put it here. I'm going to glue these together and put them here. Okay? I'll okay, be right back. Real quick, if you like to, you can just open this up and flatten it out and put your pieces on. Or just tuck them in one behind the other, right? But it's this space. And then this one goes in that last space. Really easy. And again, it's really fun to design your own because you can step up and down as much or as little as you like. If you want to do every inch and just have a bunch of steps, that'd be interesting. <laughs> but whatever it is that you like, look how pretty that looks. And then you bunch it up. And you have something that looks like this. Okay, so we're in the meantime, you guys, my kids have woken up, done all kinds of other things, and I was just kind of going through my craft stuff, so there's just other things here that uh, weren't here before. Okay, let's get this guy. I was wondering, like, how do they get so many dies in this little spot, right, in this thing? It's because they're double-sided. I will put them all out. Ooh, sorry, that was ugly. Um, oh, the stickiness stayed on here. So with these guys, all you're going to do is this little notch thing is place it over the number. Obviously, if you just place the number and you're crooked or just like this much, it's not good. But you're placing it over that little number like that is number one. And you're going to have a pretty good idea that you're cutting it correctly. And that's kind of why they have like pretty background paper on here. Because if you're off, it's not the biggest deal. Um, but lining that up and then just kind of assuring that the rest is kind of where you think it should be. You're good to go. I'm just grabbing tape that's on my counter from other times that I've done used washi or this kind of stuff. Now this is interesting. So before they used to put a number on it, didn't they? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is this one. Yeah, because this flower by itself, but so is this guy, but obviously he's a lot smaller. So let's put this guy here. And that looks good to me. And that's all you're going to do. Just take these pieces and place them over where you think they should go. Especially since they're not really marked. But like this one's clearly for this guy. It looks like this. It has the four flowers. One, two, three, and this little guy in the back. And again, covering up that number, you're going to be in a good spot for the most part. And then you can run this through your whole machine. If you only have like a marquee, just, you know, cut around these things. Do, do, do. make it smaller and then run it through no problem and then this guy is this one it has the th one two and then the third one facing away right there again right here and generally I put a little more tape I might tape this one from here to there this is the number four it has the two flowers and what's nice you know I had mentioned in my uh, video, the haul video that, you know, all these companies are coming out with things with uh, embossing in them, right? So, like, this has texture, which is really nice because even when you use it with the stamps, like, you stamp it out and then you color your image, um, that little texture will also be in the stamped image, right? That little texture that's on here. We'll push into that. So, here we go. And that looks pretty good. Oh, this one, see how that moved? And that's usually why I put two pieces of tape, not just the one. Because you never know. Just this one. Ooh, nope. We're going to put another one. I was running out of pieces. I was being lazy, guys. <laughs> Let's get this guy down. I think that'll be enough. Okay, I'm just going to run this through my um, Platinum 6 here since I'm just going to keep it like this. And I'll be right back. Guys. That should do it. I never run it back through with like an embossing, you know, shim or anything like that. Because normally... The pressure is good enough. Uh, if you can see this little texture, that's not from the coloring of the paper. That's from the dye. So I was a little bit off on this one, huh? Or maybe that's just how it is. Because it cut perfectly. But see, I love this. I love these guys. It's like, why? And then this one. See? Mm hmm. I cut some off there. But again, that pretty background paper that kind of helps you make it so it's not a big deal. I think this is the first time I've ever been off at all. Maybe. Maybe. You guys can let me know. <laughs> You've been off before, right? Um, but yeah, so that's it. Okay, let me clean up and then we'll start layering these guys okay. together. So we can bring our card back. And again, 
Yeah, it's not bad. I just feel like... Might be okay without... No, it does look kind of bare. I don't know. Maybe this isn't even the thing I would want to... Okay, so we have those three, and then over here, ooh, no, we would just have flowers. That's interesting to me, a little bit. Kind of more interests me if, hmm, let's see if we had this, but then it's in the back, you know, or here, it wouldn't really look all that great, unless we put this here, and this guy there. And this guy here, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Let me think about how I want to do this, and then we'll arrange it that way. Do something like this. It's my card, you know, we can do whatever we want. And, I mean, a lot of times I'll hold things back and use them for something else, but I think this is okay. And what's the other thing? What do I want to do? Do I want to pop all these up? Do you want to pop them up? I guess so. Why not? So, I'm not sure over here quite yet, but I will go ahead and stick these guys down. The little pop-up. little dimensional something. I mean, that's the whole... Thing, so I'll have that one kind of stick up like that. And this guy. I probably shouldn't be using these sticky tabs. They're from a diamond press set that specifically needs this kind of shape. But you know what? That's okay. I'll just cut foam tape next time I need to use that. Do something like this. And there. And then this little guy down here in front. And I was going to cut sprigs, just to have sprigs, and I totally forgot. But what's nice about using it at dimensional thing is that you can still stick things behind right if you wanted to or even like a little sentiment right here or just some little vines okay this guy this guy makes me I don't know <laughs> because this one is off I guess the other thing I can do is run it through again but you know what? I'd rather not I'm just gonna take a little scissor I've never actually done this with one of these to like make it look better but I'm gonna take this off now if you want to place this back in the die you can definitely just run it through again and that would help out a little bit. It's just that this is going to be the last layer. At least the way I'm doing it. And I don't really like the way that purple is really showing up. So I'm just going to take a moment to fussy cut this, you guys. And I'll be right back. Okay. I kind of only want to use this one, to be honest. But that's okay. All right. Let's try. So I'm just going to put these on here and layer it up. It's not... You know, rocket science. I'm just going to put this one down. I'll do the same thing with that one. Just put the layering pieces on the back and then pop them on here. Okay, I'll be right back. Same thing with this one. Okay. Actually, I'm going to look at this this way so I can see what I'm doing. Cute. So, I mean, that's pretty high, but not bad. And then that's the other thing. Are we sticking this straight down? Or should we pop it up a little bit? Now, the reason I did it this way is because I, I, I like just putting things down here. That's just how I am. I don't, I don't know. Should I pop it up? It's popped up. Maybe pop it up. It's just so much white around the edge. That was not my favorite look. But there it is. And since this is pretty and it has all my little stuff on here and the work that it took to get it going, I don't know what I want to use this for yet. So I am not going to add a sentiment yet. But for now, we have this pretty card. Now, if you're looking at it from over here, let's see. Let's pretend you're looking at it from the front. That's kind of what it looks like. You know, add sentiments, add other little things. Again, maybe some little squirrel, swirls. Uh, that's what I, what I would do. Cut a bunch of, like, gold, I don't know, things from, like, our diamond press sets or maybe, like, Anna Griffin. Anything that's kind of, like, a flourish. Just add a little here, maybe a little there, and then something going up this way. I think that would be better. And then whatever little sentiment, if that's what you want to do. But there it is, guys. So we tried it out. And again, I, I do enjoy the uh, decoupage sets from Crafter's Companion. I just don't go the whole way, guys. Because can you imagine? It'd be this much more. It'd stick out to like here. And I think I've only done it once just to show you guys. But it's just not my thing uh, to build it up that high. But there it is. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll have images coming up. I'll have links as available. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.